This is some of the coolest gravitational lensing we have ever seen. I don't think that's an exaggeration either. Just look at some of the monsters on show in this new JWST image. I mean, what is happening here in this absolute unit of a lensed galaxy? Or here in this dragon that looks like something out of a Zelda game? I am absolutely loving all of this madness. What's even better is that we can explain exactly why all of this is happening and even point out the same galaxy in multiple places on the sky. So let's see how. This is an awesome new image showing a huge cluster of galaxies and the magnificent gravitational lensing they're performing. It's a really zoomed in image of a tiny patch of space. And down here in the bottom right, we have a large cluster of galaxies centered on this bright white elliptical galaxy. This group of galaxies is so massive that it is warping the space around it so much that it distorts and bends the light reaching us from even more distant objects. The warped space means that light from more distant galaxies takes strange paths to reach us, and we often end up seeing the distant objects being stretched out into long arcs, twisted into odd shapes, or even appearing multiple times in the image. It's similar to passing the stem of a wine glass over an image, the light passes through the glass and it bends before it reaches us, resulting in warped shapes. In this image though, space is the curved medium bending the light, and this is what we call gravitational lensing. I talk more about the details of lensing and do a practical demonstration in this video here, so please check it out if you're interested and you want to see some more details. A neat thing here is that it not only bends the light, but it can also magnify it, causing it to be brighter than it would be without the lens. This lets us see galaxies that are more distant than we would otherwise be able to see, and means that lenses like this are often our window to the most distant objects in the universe. In this particular image, we have some of the best lensed objects that I have ever seen. By that, I mean just look at this beast of a galaxy that looks surprisingly more flared than a typical galaxy, and this long thin streak below it too. There are a whole bunch of other amazing arcs, for example right here. And these are all because of the gravitational lensing caused by the cluster. Let's focus on this big smudge to start with though, because the amazing thing about it is that it's actually two images of the same galaxy smashed together. Of course, you must wonder how we could possibly know this, and it's all due to the combined power of Hubble and JWST. You see, Hubble looked at this same cluster a while ago in order to prepare for the JWST images of it, and they did some amazing mapping and analysis. This is all thanks to the JWST templates team, who have published papers and did a great Twitter thread on this cluster. Links in the description so you can take a closer look yourself if you'd like to. From the Hubble data, it was possible to map out the mass in the galaxy cluster, and from this we can work out the paths that light from more distant galaxies will travel. Using this, the team drew these red lines on top of the Hubble image of the same landscape, and these red lines are called the critical curves. If distant galaxies happen to live in the line of sight that passes through these lines, then those galaxies are very likely to be heavily warped and appear multiple times in the image. That's right, sometimes lensing is so dramatic that we see objects repeated on the sky, because the light from the object can travel multiple paths to reach us, and this gives us some cool effects. It's an amazing and stunning thing to see, and it really confirms that Einstein's general relativity was pretty good. The Hubble team actually found some of these repeated objects and they labelled them for us. For example, the objects labelled 20.1, 20.2 and 20.3 are all the exact same galaxy, repeated in the image. The same is true for the 30s and the 40s. They show the same objects multiple times. Isn't that pretty cool? Now let's rotate the JWST image round to match the orientation, and we can match up galaxies and things start to make sense. The massive smudge we talked about is actually two images of Galaxy 30, but they overlap the critical curve and mesh together. The same galaxy then actually appears down here too. This one is further from the cluster and the critical curves, so it's way less distorted and looks a lot more like you might expect a galaxy to. This is the galaxy that's affectionately known as the Cosmic Seahorse, but you can let me know in the comments how seahorsey you really think it is. Similarly for our dragon friend, it's three images of the same galaxy overlapping a little and warping together. And again, we can see another copy of the same galaxy over here looking a little bit less misshapen. 
The 40s in the Hubble image are these three images here. Again, all three of these are the same galaxy. Your next question might be, sure, they kind of look the same, but how can we be sure they really are the same galaxies being repeated? Why can't they just be different galaxies that look a bit similar? Well, the answer here, as it often is in astronomy, is spectra. This is where we take the light received from each galaxy and break it down into all the different wavelengths of light that make it up. When we do this, each and every galaxy has a unique combination of wavelengths that make it up, and we call this the fingerprint of the galaxy. It tells us things like what elements are in the galaxy, how hot it is, how far away it is, and more. Since the spectra for every galaxy is unique, we can play a matching game. When we look at spectra from the suspected repeated images, we see that the spectra are almost identical, telling us that they are indeed the same galaxy repeated, but also revealing that the light has traveled slightly different paths to reach us, and leaving very small differences in the spectra. The other way we can confirm that they are the same galaxy is by modeling what we expect to see based on those critical curves we mentioned a minute ago. And again, that matches exactly what we see here, repeated images and everything. So, I really do think this is some of the best lensing we've seen from JWST so far, but I'd love to hear whether or not you agree with that in the comments below. Interestingly, the visible galaxies in the foreground don't actually provide enough mass for the amount of lensing we can see here, and so lensing like this actually provides great evidence for dark matter. In fact, based on the lensing we see, we can map out the mass in the foreground, including this elusive dark matter. So these images actually tell us about the distribution of dark matter in clusters like this, which is pretty awesome if you ask me. If you'd like to know more about the weird and wonderful dark matter in the universe, then I have a playlist of videos that talk about how we know it exists and some of the best ideas we have for what it could be. So I'll link that in the description of this video. And since you made it to the end, let's celebrate by checking out this other new galaxy cluster that's been imaged by JWST. It's called El Gordo, and once again features some epic gravitational lensing. I mean, just look at all of those galaxies stretched out into lines and arcs, and marvel at the beauty of the universe. It's occurring for all of the same reasons that we've just been discussing, so I'll just leave you with the image, but feel free to ask any questions in the comments below. Go crazy! Thanks for watching, and click on one of the videos on screen if you'd like to keep exploring the cosmos together. Either way, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye!